Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now answering a question from um, June 2019 Edexcel C3 paper. This question has been requested by one of the students for me to answer. And uh, the C3 uh, syllabus, well, this particular question in the C3 syllabus is related to the new P3 specification. So this is very much relevant to P3 now. So here it says, given that A is a positive constant, and that f of x is equal to the modulus of 3x minus a, and x is an element of the real numbers. Sketch the graph with equation y equals f of x, showing the coordinates of the points where the graph cuts or meets the coordinate axes. Okay, so we're going to draw this function, which is an, a modulus function, absolute value function. And in order to do this, we can, do, we can think about it in two different ways. Okay, one of the ways is you can think about it in terms of the transformation of the graph f of y equals f of x into y equals f of x inside the modulus sign. Okay, if you think about it like this, then what, one of the ways of, of drawing it is to first draw the function as if um, there's no modulus sign. Just draw it as if there's no modulus sign. So, of course, when, you draw, when you're sketching, you want to make sure that you, you know, make your axes... You don't have to really, when you're sketching, you don't have to really make the, um, you know, sketch very accurate, but you should use straight lines with a ruler, label your axes, label your origin, and label just the coordinates of the points where the graph will cut or, the, uh, the, or meet the coordinate axes. It means you don't have to put one, two, three, four, five, minus, no, you have to just put the important points in. Now, the, the equation that we're trying to draw is what f of x equals, so I'll call it y equals, um, the modulus of 3x minus a. Okay, now, so when you're trying to draw this using the idea of using transformations, first what you do is you draw it as if there was no modulus sign. So if you draw y equals 3x minus a, um, when you find where it crosses the y-axis, you put x equals 0. When x equals 0, y is going to be 3 times 0 minus a, which is minus a. So that's the point 0 minus a. So this graph would pass through 0 minus a, which is down here somewhere. And the second thing you do is, uh, well, apart from that, you have to also find where it crosses the x-axis. So when y equals 0, when y equals 0, you're going to have 3x minus a equals 0. When you solve that, you add a to both sides, divide by 3, you get x equals a over 3. So that's going to be like one third of a, which is somewhere over here. And if you were to draw this graph as if it was just Without the modular sign, it would look something like this. It would go through these two points, and it would look something like this. Okay, that would be the graph of y equals y equals 3x minus a. Now, what we're drawing is a modulus of 3x minus a, which is, um, you know, where the whole of the function is inside the modular sign, which means that nothing here can become negative nothing can no y value will ever be negative so every y value will just be the same magnitude but positive so for example this hits at minus a now it's going to hit at a instead all right so all the negative values will become positive and the positive values will stay where they are so basically the whole graph just basically reflects what's below in below the x-axis it reflects in the x-axis what's above the x-axis stays where it is so up to this point here Everything will stay as it is, and then after that point, it will reflect in the x-axis. So you'll end up with something that looks like this. Okay, so this part will now just disappear, and you'll have this V-shaped graph where nothing goes below the x-axis. All right, so this, this half of it is y equals 3x minus a, and this half of it is y equals, if you, if you um, take the negative um, argument of this modulus, it's going to be minus 3x plus a. Okay, so that's one way of dealing with it by thinking about the transformation of this by thinking how it would go. If there was no modular sign, if there's a modular sign, then what's below the x-axis reflects in the x-axis. Okay, and there's another case which is not in this particular question where you might have something like this. In which case that would be this transformation, which means that it will go all the way to the y-axis, and then what's in the y-axis will, what, what's on the positive side will reflect in the 
negative side, it will look something like this. The V-shape will be down there. But that's a, a question that's not here anyway, so we'll deal with that in another video, no problem. Okay, so now, as I said, that's one way of drawing the graph. The other way of drawing the graph is to do exactly what I did here. Look at the positive argument, which is y equals ux minus a. So draw that as, as I did before. Then look at the negative argument, which is minus 3x plus a. Now that hits the x-axis at the same point. Because when uh, y is 0, you're going to have 3x equals a, x equals a over 3. But it hits the y-axis at plus a. So it's going to go like this, as we can see. And then we draw that half and that half together. And then we'll see that we have that v-shape. So there's where we will stop here. All right, so that's two ways of sketching this graph. Um, I think the first way is probably kind of easier. So that's the sketch of the graph. So that's part A done. Two marks. You must show the coordinates of the points where the graph cuts or meets the axis. So better to write this as a third A, a zero, and zero A. To write it as a coordinate, that's pr probably better. Okay, so there's the answer to part A. Now part B says, given that x equals 4 is a solution to this equation, find the two possible values of A. So if x equals 4 is a solution to this equation, then we have either you're going to have, you can think of it as the modulus of 3x minus a equals a half x plus 2, as it is. So 3x minus a equals a half x plus 2. That's taking the, the, you know, the positive argument of this. And if we put x equals 4 into here, we'll have 3 times 4 minus a equals a half times 4 plus 2. So 12 minus a equals a half times 4 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4. So we're going to have 12 minus 4 equals a. So a is equal to 8. That's one, one possible solution. And then we're going to have, um, we can take the negative argument of this. So we can either say minus 3x plus a equals a half x plus 2. Or we could do it the other way around. We could say 3x minus a equals minus a half x minus 2. Whichever way you want to do it, it's perfectly fine. Okay, if you do it this way, you're kind of like doing it according to how the graph looks. Because half x plus 2 would be a line, okay, which will cut the graph somewhere like this. Okay, it will go something like that. It will cut, it will, so y equals a half x plus 2 will have a positive gradient of a half. It will cross that 2 here, cross that 4 here, because the gradient is going to be one, uh, 2 over 4, so it's going to be like a gradient of a half. So it's going to cut into th these two places. Okay, so one of one of the places, if it crosses x equals four, one possible place, one possible value of a is eight, and another possible value of a if it crosses at x, x equals four, is when you have minus three times four plus a equals a half times two plus two, that's minus twelve plus a equals that's going to, half times four sorry plus two that's going to be two plus two which is four. So a equals 4 plus 12, which is 16. Okay, so you end up with a equals 16 and a equals 8. Okay, so basically, um, I'm guessing if if the graph was y equals 3x minus 8, okay, um, one of those two points is going to be x equals 4. And same thing when a equals 16, one of those two points is going to be x equals 4 as well. So there's two different ways you're going to have x equals 4. So probably one of them is going to be intercepting there and the other one is going to be intercepting there depending on the equation of the graph. Then it says find the value of the larger solution. Okay, so x equals 4 has to be the smaller solution and we want to find that x equals the larger solution. So what we can do here is we can see that uh, when you had 3x minus a equals a half x plus 2, well, that's where you're going to get the x value over here. Okay, that's a half x plus 2 equals 3x minus a, the positive argument of this. So that means this value of x will be the smaller solution. But when you had a equals 16, okay, that's where the modulus, that's where the, the negative argument, which is this side of the graph, hit the curve. So this is, if, if x equals 16, then this, so if a equals 16, sorry, then this would be x equals 4, and that's going to be the bigger solution. All right. So what we have to do is we have to take a equals 16, a equals 16, and we have to solve the equation 
of the positive argument because this is where the where the negative argument is where x equals 4 the positive argument is going to be on this side of it okay where half x plus 2 equals a 3x minus a so we're going to have um, when a half x plus 2 is equal to 3x minus a um, and here we're going to take a is 16 so a is 16 so half half x plus 2 equals 3x minus 16 so we're going to let's multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the fraction so we'll have x plus 4 equals 6x minus 32 so 4 minus 32 4 plus 32 is 36 equals um, 6 mi 6x minus x which is 5x okay so therefore x is equal to 36 over 5 which is the same as 7.2 Okay, either of those is fine. So find the value of the larger solution. So it could be either of these two. You can say x equals 36 over 5, x equals 7.2. Both of them are the same number, basically, expressed in the simplest form. So here we have the answer to part C. Now, so that's, that's the question that the student was asking. So I'm going to elaborate a bit more into that, just so that they understand. You see, when, we, when A is 8, okay, that's where 3x minus 8, 8 equals half x plus 4 that's where you're going to have this as x equals 4 because you see this is where the positive argument meets this graph of half x plus 2 this is the positive argument so if you have 3x if you have y equals 3x minus 8 this will be x equals 4 and of course this will be less than x equals 4 so this will be the smaller value of x okay that will be the smaller value of x however if we looked at the other equation that we solved, when we use a negative argument, well, the negative argument was this one, and when we solve that with x equals 4, okay, we got a equals 16. So when uh, when 3x minus 16, when, when y equals the modulus of 3x minus 16 hits this curve, this is going to be where x equals 4, and this part of it. So this part of it, further along, that's where you're going to have the other solution, which we found is 7.2. That's going to be the bigger value of x, okay, which is the bigger solution. So that's how we can uh, deal with it. If I had used, for example, x equals um, a equals 8 and solved the negative argument of the equ equation of minus 3x um, minus, minus 3x minus 8 equals a half x plus 2 or minus 3x, uh, sorry, plus 8 equals a half x plus 2, I would have got a value less than 4. Okay, and I can show you that that's what's going to happen. If you use minus 3x plus 8 equals a half x plus 2 then multiply both sides by 2 you get 6x plus 16 is equal to x plus 4 so you end up with 5x is equal to sorry that's a minus 6x so you, you add you end up with sorry 16 minus 4 is 12 is equal to 7x so x is equal to 12 over 7. 12 over 7, of course, is less than 4. So that would be your 12 over 7, and that would be 4. So that doesn't give you the bigger solution, okay? Because you got when when x equals 4, uh, when when you use a when x equals 4 in the equation, okay, one of the possible values was a equals 8, and that's when we use the the positive um, um, the positive argument. So when we use the positive argument, this one here. Okay, with a with x equals four, we got a equals eight. So therefore, to find the other solution when a equals eight, it's going to be a number here which is less than it. But when we have when we use the negative argument of this, we got a equals sixteen. When we use minus three x plus a with this uh, with this graph, we got a equals sixteen. So when x equals four, you know, then you end up with the the equation three x minus sixteen. If you used, you know, the negative argument, so that means if you you have to find the other solution, you've got to use a positive argument now, right? To find the other place when when so when you have a equals sixteen, use the positive argument, and then you see that you get a value of x which is bigger, all right? So that's how we answer this question. We want to find the larger solution, so we use the a equals sixteen for our equation, and that that means we're going to be finding this place which is bigger than x equals 4. Okay, if we, if we use a equals 8, then our x equals 4 would be here, and the other x value would be this place, which would be the smallest solution. 
All right, so I hope that was uh, clear uh, and you understand now exactly what to do for this part of the question. Um, yeah, other questions, if I get around to answering them or if I'm requested to answer them from this paper, I will upload in the playlist that should appear in this region here. Other questions about the modulus function, uh, functions in P3 can be found in this playlist over here and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.